Uh, Saad Khan. Saad is a PhD candidate in the Department of Gender, Women, and Sexuality Studies at the University of Washington. He is researching LGBTQ politics and the various ways activist groups, development organizations, and the state work with one another and generate new possibilities across a nexus of gender and sexuality minority work, post-colonial modernity, and violence in Bangladesh. Thanks, Saad. I'm going to turn it to you. Thanks, Sunila. And hi, everyone. Um, and thank you, Jessica, for that baller presentation. I loved it. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was, uh, I'm, I'm so happy that we are actually, you know, uh, we have met here today to talk about this because you were, you're completely right. You know, even when I was writing this application, I did not have anyone to turn to but you. And then Sunila was there too, because I saw that your name, you know, Sunila's name in the, uh, in the, um, the website of SSRC. Um, and so, you know, this is really helpful for me as well to kind of reflect on what I did because it's really a blur <laughs> at this point, you know. Um, so very similar to Jessica's structure, I will talk a bit about my project and then um, what I did. And um, also just talking about the SSRC application itself. I'm just going to start a timer so that I don't exceed the 10 minutes. Um, and then uh, the advices I got. So uh, my project is, uh, is an ethnographic study of queer politics in Bangladesh. And um, I am particularly interested to look at how the LGBTQ organizing scene shifted in relation to these uh, uh, political murders that happened in 2016 of two queer activists, Dulhaz Manan and Mabu Rabbi Tonoy. And um, it's, a, it's a very, you know, uh, it was a very, it was a turning point because it really shifted the queer scene, which is pretty short, you know, the visibility, it's, it's, it's a very short kind of movement that started and ended really quickly. And so I'm kind of looking at what happened in that moment, uh, what happened before that, and also the afterlives of, of these deaths, but also how queer um, uh, LGBTQ activists are organizing again, are strategizing again in this, uh, in the context of, you know, um, acute danger and um, uh, uh, intolerance, right? And so I'm, I'm looking at how uh, these people, many of whom left the country and a lot of people also stayed back, um, are kind of uh, organizing among themselves, the kind of strategies that they're taking up to resist a lot of these violences that happen every day, and also the kind of networks they're creating with um, NGOs and state. And in the process, what kind of agents, agencies emerge, right? And uh, kinds of um, um, possibilities. So that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. Um, so, you know, uh, going back to what uh, Jessica ended with, the, 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 the three, the four questions at the beginning, um, I remember reading that that's the first thing that the committee reads, actually, of your application. I might be wrong, but I think that's, you know, I read it somewhere. Um, and so you really have to put a lot of effort in those first four questions. Um, and that's, you know, one thing that what I did was that I worked on them. I brainstormed each of them every week until my submission, actually, um, because there are four so, you know, I would spend some time during the day just to reflect on what I want to write about uh, in, in these four uh, questions. Um, and so, you know, really spend some, take the, uh, take the time to answer those questions. The, the first question is the abstract. So really make sure that it's, um, it's very concise and it really captures uh, your project really well. Um, always remember to include the methodology in the abstract as well. That's what I did as well, because it really kind of, you know, tells uh, everybody what you're doing. And the methodology is kind of important in an application like this. At least that's what I thought, you know, writing about the met methodology um, as nicely as possible. Um, you know, applying for the SSRC was like a, was like conducting a mini research for me um, because I really had to kind of uh, read about SSRC itself, the organization, and what kind of research work they fund. So that's what I, you know, kind of uh, kind of did at the initial phases. Uh, the kinds of research they funded in the in the past. Um, it, uh, what are the kind of projects that are similar to mine? Because um, work on sexuality has been really underfunded in the SSRC, especially on queer politics. And that's something that really stuck out for me was that this is a really 
special moment for me to make that kind of intervention. And so I really took that opportunity to and saw that as a productive way to kind of engage in you know, social sciences. Um, and I thought that this project was very uniquely uh, positioned in, you know, in the discipline itself, like sexuality studies and queer politics, because it's speaking from a very specific mo uh, moment, but also uh, place in the global South. Right, and so there is already very um, limited scholarship um, of, of, of sexuality that emerges from the global south, and more so from a country like Bangladesh. And so I really had to kind of highlight that that this is a unique project, and you know that's what I had to come back to again and again that this is a new kind of intervention um, that I'm making in the field of sexuality studies. So you know, going back to what Jessica said, really gear back to your project again and again, and kind of highlight the importance of it, uh, of such an intervention. Um, I also read, uh, I read about the fellows who got funding and I read about their work. I went to some of their website and some of their, you know, um, uh, the university links. And I, and I did that just to get a sense of how I want to write about myself in the application, you know, like the kind of work I have done, because, you know, let's face it, we all have done really important work. Now it's the moment to kind of sit with it and highlight the important ones that will really speak to your project and to this proposal. So, you know, sit down, take some time to reflect on that, um, and kind of bring them together to make sure that you can, you know, write about it in the proposal. And I'll, and I'll tell you how in a minute. Um, then I uh, kind of uh, read um, the essays that I needed to, you know, engage with for, in my proposal. Um, I kept some time to do my readings. If you, if you, you know, um, I know this, like, I think the deadline for this is November. So we you still have time um, to do some readings before you jump into the writing part. I spoke extensively with the people that I know I'll be working with when I go to the field, when I go back, when I go to Bangladesh. So I really took like a week or two just reaching out to people, talking to them about my project, what the way I want to engage with them, and also what they, how they want to engage with me and in, th in this work. So that's that kind of engagement, that kind of you know um, conversation can be very helpful to ground your uh, proposal. Um, and then I started writing, and I you know I wrote in chunks. I did not sit in one you know sitting to write the whole thing out. I took one week just to develop my first draft. Um, and then I sent it to my professors, my committee members, and then we convened and we talked about it in details. And then I took the next two to three weeks to revise and finalize everything. And, you know, remember to take breaks. It's really important. Sometimes we forget to take breaks, uh, you know, when we are writing proposals. So take a walk. It's very important to take breaks. Please do that. Um, and the, way, the one thing that really helps me is that uh, when I kind of um, do colorful outlining. So I use big, you know, posters and I literally put them on my wall and I use a lot of colorful post-its. So, you know, it's a very, it's going to be a very drawn out, boring process. So make it colorful, make it fun for yourself. I think that's really important. Um, the SSRC application is a very different kind of application because they really want us to emphasize on a comparative lens. That's, you know, that's something that they really mention again and again, is that make sure that your project has at this comparative lens. Um, and I think that's a really important uh, entrance point to also think of how your project, how you want to make your project interdisciplinary, right? And you know, at the beginning, it might seem, a, seem like a very daunting, intimidating task, you know, how, just thinking about how can I make my project speak to uh, different disciplines? But, you know, honestly, we do so many different kinds of reading in our different classes that we, we take. So I would just, you know, what I did was that I, you know, I went back to some of the essays that I, that I read um, in my classes to think of the kind of disciplines and the fields that I really want to engage with and where I want to make an intervention. And so for me, it was, um, and anthropology, sociology, and political science. And I kind of looked at what kind of work on queer issues uh, has, you know, has taken place in these particular fields. So for example, in anthropology, I read uh, Naisargi Davis' Queer Activism in India. For sociology, I read Chaitanya Lakim Sethi's Legalizing Sex. And for political science, I read LGBTQ politics, a critical reader. And the important thing is that in your bibliography, and so I'm just going straight to, um, my advisors now because I have two minutes. So in the bibliography uh, part, there is a bibliography. So you know, one advice that I got, and these are advices I got from professors, uh, from from Jessica herself, uh, and my committee members, is that um, make sure you use the, uh, your bibliography is up to date. 
you know, you must include work uh, that is, you know, uh, scholarships uh, that are canonical in your field, but also a scholarship that is new and emerging. So that's something that, you know, uh, to, to keep in mind, always highlight the newness of your research intervention, because it probably is, and nobody knows the project better than yourself. So, you know, see this as an opportunity to kind of tell a story about it, you know, um, and raise motivating, inspiring questions in the process, right? This is an opportunity that we are getting to do this research. So how do I really want to uh, use this opportunity? So, you know, it really comes down to that. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, so, um, you know, there is a question about, um, travel or preliminary field work. If you have done pre pre preliminary work, really uh, highlight that as well, because that really shows that you're invested in this kind of project. Um, highlight one or two a work that you have done in the research proposal, because we do not get a lot of space to talk about the kind of work we did. But one thing that, you know, we, so, uh, that I did and also Jessica did uh, was that we, we included external links to our work. And I thought that was a really helpful way to kind of, you know, uh, can, uh, you know also kind of tell uh, the readers about the kind of work we did. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, and one thing, one other thing that can be helpful to mention in the proposal is also how, uh, you know, your larger scholarly aspirations. So the, that kind of academic or non-academic spaces where you wanna make an intervention and, you know, and where you wanna take this uh, project to, and it can be conferences, it can be think tanks, or it can be activist spaces. That is my timer. So that was 10 minutes <laughs> and, you know, I can, I'm happy to talk more about it in the Q&A. Thank you.